Hallelujah. Are we really preaching Christ? Are we really preaching Christ? Is Christ really the person I see preachers endorsing today? Or are we just conveniently using his name to promote our brands? Are we really preaching Christ? Or has he just become a part of our marketing strategy? Because we want people to accept our brands. Because selling our brands mean getting more money. More monies will come in. Are we just conveniently using the name of Christ, quoting scriptures, and appearing to be godly in all of our sayings, which for the most part are just motivational speeches more often than not? Are we just incorporating his name just because we are getting some kind of monetary benefit? Or are we really preaching Christ and what Christ represents and who he really is and stands for? This is a question that we all must ponder. Because becoming more prevalent in our midst each and every day are the sayings that have the name Christ. People calling his name who have absolutely no relationship with him, nothing to do with him. They have their secret agendas that they're pushing in secret places and behind the scenes. And if we're not careful, we go, hallelujah, running behind these individuals when they have ulterior motives. People of God. Our message tonight is one that is going to require that we all do an introspection. I believe every now and then we must ask ourselves the why. Why we do what we do. Why we say what we say. Why we go where we go. There's a time and place for everything. And I believe that there's always a time when each and every one of us ought to go back to the drawing board. We ought to go back to basics and must conduct an evaluation of ourselves. Because it is so easy for us to drift. We're living in such a materialistic world we're living in such a time when all kinds of vain things are being promoted right before our eyes that it's very important, it's quintessential that every now and then we ask ourselves the question, why? Please turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 to be exact. Good evening everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Just a gentle reminder, this broadcast is streamed every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time or New York Time. Remember that we stream both on Facebook and YouTube and recently I've started to stream also on TikTok. My TikTok ID is Shadeen Anglin353. You might want to check me out there. The Lord is going to utilize all the platforms to promote his word. And that is exactly what I do when I stand before this camera every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, once you are there in the book of Acts, please let me know. We will begin to read the base scripture. I want us to go all the way to Acts chapter 2, verse 37. That's verse 37. And if you will, you might just put this in the comments for the benefit of those people who will be joining in the next few seconds and minutes. Acts 2, verse 37. Hallelujah. If you've just joined, remember to hit that share button that is at the bottom right of your screen. By doing so, you will allow 
people who are predestined to hear the word to actually hear it. And so I give you a few seconds to do so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to greet some people in the interim. Sister Janet McLean, thank you for joining. Corrine Glasgow, good to see you. Sister Wilby, Sister Vivian, Sister Sabrina, good to see you. Kim Bobbitt, Charlene, Kamisha, uh, Keshni, Zaria, hallelujah, Krishan, Melissa, it's good to see you. Tashika, it's good to see you. MJ, it's good to see you. Siobhan Gale, Simone Brown, thank you so much for joining. Hallelujah. Lady Carol, it's good to see you. Sister Shanique McLean, good to see you as well. Hallelujah. Let's just pray for a brief moment before we delve into the word of truth. Lord, we thank you for this privilege to dissect your word. We thank you, Lord, that you will be opening up the eyes of so many. We thank you that you will be convicting so many. And as a result of the conviction, so many will be converted tonight to your honor and glory. Father, we thank you that your spirit will begin to increase while Shadeen will decrease right now. I thank you, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart in this hour shall be acceptable because this is what you have ordained to be released today at this time. Hallelujah for your people. We thank you for the bread of life. We thank you that it is fresh. We thank you that it is well prepared and is now ready to be served. We give you all the glory, the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. Now the word of the Lord reads thus. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? I want us to go to verse 1 of this same chapter real quickly. And then we will go to verse 14, just so that we can have an idea of what transpired before we got here. Verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Let's jump to verse 14. It reads thus, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you who dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. So just to give us a backdrop of what happened before. The Pentecostal experience was a very marvelous and powerful one that the Holy Spirit would have so allowed to happen in the presence of many witnesses. Even unbelievers at the time fell into that group, hallelujah, that was going to witness an extraordinary, unprecedented move of God. The word of God says that men from all over, from the various nations were at the time gathered in Jerusalem where this extraordinary event would occur. And upon hearing their various languages being spoken by men who were never taught these languages, some of them had never visited the territories in which these languages were spoken. They all marveled, saying to themselves, but how come these unlearned men are speaking my language? They knew that something supernatural was occurring. Because sure enough, in those days, it wasn't like in our days or our time now, when we have schools to learn all these various languages. If we want to learn to speak German, we can go to the German school. French, we go to French classes, Spanish, etc. These schools that teach languages were not prevalent in those days. Hallelujah. And so these men not only saw and heard, but we want to believe that they also felt a difference in the atmosphere, causing them to realize and accept 
that something extraordinary, something supernatural, something divine was occurring at the moment. The word of God says while they were there pondering, the spirit of the Lord moved heavily upon one called Peter. Peter stood up in their midst. Peter started to deliver a sermon. Hallelujah. Peter started to break down the scripture that many of them were so reading and becoming familiar with for many years. See, they read that which they did not understand. Hallelujah. I don't know how they were getting their interpretations. But clearly they did not, hallelujah, connect the dots. And at least at the time when they were supposed to. Peter took them back to the book of hallelujah. The prophetic book, hallelujah. In which he said, hallelujah, remember that Christ has promised that a time was going to come. When his spirit would have been poured out upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Your young men would have dreams and your young women would have visions. Peter was saying unto them, this prophetic word that you read about in the laws is what has, hallelujah, come to pass right before your eyes. He dissected the word for them. By the time he was through, the word of God says that the men then turned unto him and said unto him, Peter, what shall we do? What is it that we must do having heard these words? And here's what the Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost was keen to point out that the men were pricked in their hearts. There was something about the efficacy of the word. There was something about the accuracy of the word. There was something about, hallelujah, the main point of the word. There was something about the message they were endorsing and the person behind the message they endorsed. So much so that there was a pricking in their hearts. Now that word prick, I want you to understand it literally first. When something pricks something else, you're talking about something that is piercing. Tell two people the word of the Lord has a piercing effect. And when his word was rightly dissected, even through his servant Peter, it was piercing some hearts. Although many of these people had not heard. Although many of these people were not yet introduced to. The God that pre Peter professed. He and the other apostles. They were so impacted by the message that came from his mouth. That they could not sit still. They could not continue to go about their usual business. Hallelujah. They could not continue indulging in things in which they were once indulging. They had to ask the question. Hallelujah. Give me one second, guys. I'm hearing people say that they're not hearing us clearly on YouTube. Hold on one second. Let's see if we can just... Do a quick troubleshooting for the benefit of those people who are on YouTube. Hallelujah. In the meantime, just put the base scripture in the comments. Hallelujah. For those who will be joining, glory to God. What is the base scripture? We're looking at Acts chapter 2 with focus on verse 37. Acts 2, 37. Hallelujah. Acts 2 verse 37. Glory to God. Let us restart on YouTube for the benefit of those people who were just now saying that they weren't hearing us clearly. Hallelujah. Of course, as mentioned at the beginning of the stream, whenever we come here on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, 
we stream simultaneously on YouTube. Of course, you know, there are some people who do not really do Facebook. And so for the benefit of those people, we usually go live on YouTube. Now, we're restarting on YouTube. Hopefully people will hear this time. Let's go. Now, we're saying that the word of the Lord had such an effect that these men asked the question, having been pricked in their hearts, men of God, what must we do? Now the spirit of the Lord is saying unto his people this evening that wherever his word is rightly dissected, wherever his word of truth is preached in its raw, authentic form, where nobody adds to it, where nobody takes away from it, where nobody twists it or perverts it to please their lifestyles, then it will have such a piercing effect on the hearts of all those who are listening that they will begin to ask questions similar to the ones that were asked by these men of Jerusalem. What must we do? What is it that we ought to do? We heard your word. And we saw Christ magnified through your message. We want to receive this Christ that you profess. Because based on the message that I heard just now, I realized that in Christ are the solutions to the problems of life that I have. In Christ are the solutions to the vicissitudes of life that I am facing and that I will face in times ahead. I hear you talk about Christ. And I don't just want to be a listener of his word, but I want to be a carrier of his word. Every time the word of the Lord is rightly opened up to his people, there must be change. There must be a pricking of the heart. People should never sit there being comfortable in their sins. If Christ is really being preached. Because the word of the Lord has come with a cleansing effect. The word of the Lord, it purifies. The word of the Lord is like a burning fire. When the word of the Lord is rightly dissected, it purges, it sanctifies, it makes pure, it makes clean. So the question is, why then are we not seeing more people being sanctified? Why are we not seeing more people being purged? Why are we not hearing more people ask the question, what shall we do? Why are we not seeing more people being uncomfortable? If the word of the Lord is being preached the way it ought to be preached, I'm telling you. Then there is no way we can have congregations in which people are living in sin. Blatant sin and are comfortable. How can the word and message of Christ be preached in its raw format? And people are there, hallelujah, folding their legs. Sitting there in a relaxed position. If the word of God is indeed a sword, can we turn our Bibles real quickly to the book of Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Let's see what it says. Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Now the word of the Lord reads thus. It says, for the word of God is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Let's break that down. Tell two people the word of the Lord is alive. The word of the Lord is spirit. That's why it is alive. See, when it comes to the word of God, it's not like the words that we speak when we're reading some non-fictional book. Hallelujah. This word in front of you in the written format right now 
When you speak it, it becomes spirit because it is alive. Hallelujah. Tell two people, the word of the Lord, it quickens. Not only is it alive, but it makes alive the things that heareth. Hallelujah. Not only is it quick, not only does it quicken, but the word of the Lord is also sharp and it's powerful. So just like a sword that pierces when it's thrust, hallelujah, the word of the Lord pierces hearts. The word of the Lord ought to cut away from us those things that defile us, those things that contaminate us, those things that pollute us, those things that want to be like parasites to us, hallelujah. Those things that want to mark us for destruction and for death. When the word of the Lord is rightly dissected, it ought to pierce, hallelujah, and cut away those things from our lives. So that by the time you're through hearing that sermon, by the time you're through hearing the dissecting of that word, hallelujah, there must be some tangible, obvious difference in your life and your circumstance. Every time the word of God is rightly preached, and this is a pattern that you'll see, hallelujah, in the ministry of the apostles of the days of Acts. Glory to God. Wherever they brought the word, there was always change. Let us look on the seventh chapter of Acts, chapter, hallelujah, of the book of Acts, rather. We looked at the chapter two a few moments ago. Now we're going to look at just a few chapters later. Acts chapter 7. Let us hear what the word of the Lord had to say. Hallelujah. In a similar occurrence. Hallelujah. Acts 7 verse 54. It reads thus. Now this was Stephen who was preaching. Not Peter this time. But the Holy Ghost was moving strongly upon Stephen just the same. Stephen had just, hallelujah, broken down for these people who were listening. A lot of things that happened, even from the book of Genesis, even from the Pentateuch that they held in high esteem in those days, and I guess they still do. He got to a point where he said unto them that your fathers persecuted the prophets that the Lord had sent to you to warn you and to teach you. But they were slain. Hallelujah. And they were betrayed and murdered. And he went on to say unto them that as it pertains to the law, you all did not keep it. Who was his audience? His audience comprised rabbis, priests. His audience comprised people who were well learned in the book of the law. But the Holy Ghost, being no respecter of person, was just dissecting the word of truth. He said, y'all murdered the servants of the living God. You claim to be. People who are upholding his word and who are living by his laws. But the fact that you have resisted, opposed and rejected the prophets, the servants he has sent to deliver you, means that you have by extension opposed his word. And to oppose his word is to oppose him. You're hypocrites, in other words. This was a very sharp word. How could he say such a thing to the intelligence? How could he say such a thing to the eloquent? How could he say such a thing to the most educated and the most taught in Bible knowledge? But he was speaking the truth. And here is what speaking the truth does. The Bible says in the 54th verse, which is the verse that followed those remarks. It says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. 
and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They were listening and they were hearing. And the word that they heard was so impactful, was so divine, was so accurate, was so full of the Holy Ghost, was so full of power, was so full of efficacy through Christ, that it again pierced their hearts. Every time the word of the Lord is preached in the right manner, whenever the word of the Lord is ministered, whenever it is released into an atmosphere, its hearers ought to be pierced. Its hearers are not supposed to be comfortable in their sins. The word of the Lord ought to illuminate that which is in the dark. The word of the Lord ought to sanctify and it ought to reveal to individuals the areas of their lives that are in need of change. There was a time in the Lord Jesus' ministry when he said unto his disciples and all those who were around them, he said, I did not come to give peace to this world. I came to bring a sword. What was he saying? Christ was saying the message that I come to bring is not one that is going to cause you to remain in your state of comfort. It's not one that is going to cause you to continue down this, this line or trajectory of being, hallelujah, complacent in your backsliding. The word and message that I'm carrying in my belly is one that is supposed to convict you of your compromise. It's one that is supposed to convict you of the areas of your life, hallelujah. That is falling short or that are falling short. I came to cut away from you those dross. And as you know when you're making silver. The dross has got to be separated from the rest of the material. The dross is called unwanted substance. It is said to be unclean. It is of no use to the end product. And so when they're processing silver, they get rid of the dross. Which happens to be the lighter part of the whole material. The part that oftentimes comes up to the surface. Because it is so lightweight, it is oftentimes tossed away. And never used in the end product. There are some things in our lives that carry, hallelujah, no weight in the kingdom. They're light. And God would have had to bring us through some processes where those things will come to the surface. And the word of God and its ministration thereof is one such method that the Holy Ghost uses to cause those things in our lives that are destructive. They came into our lives easily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is saying that some of these things that we hold on to so dearly, they're so destructive and we don't realize. That is why he has to take us through processes that's going to separate us and separate in our lives the things that are needed and the things that are unwanted. Jesus says the message that I have brought is not one that is going to make you comfortable in your lifestyle. I tell you the truth. That if Christ was being preached, preached rather, the way it ought to be preached and more often, hallelujah, then we would not be seeing so many double standards right before our eyes. If Christ was being preached the way he ought to be preached, 
We wouldn't have people living one lifestyle in church and a whole nother lifestyle on TikTok if the gospel of Christ and the person of Christ was being endorsed as who he really is and represents. We would not find people presumptuously coming into the house of God. Hallelujah. Taking on roles and responsibilities that they're not fit to take on. Because as far as we are concerned, our God is holy. And if we ever understand the holiness of Jehovah, we would never dare go to the party last night and then we come playing drums tonight. It would never happen. We would never dare go smoking and drinking last night and then come playing the keyboard tonight. We would never do it. If we understood the holiness of God and how he is set apart. See, because the word that we're preaching these days, it's not making people uncomfortable. It's making people feel like their ways and their lifestyles are acceptable. The message that we are dissecting today, it's so motivational. Hallelujah. It is hyping people up to continue in their lifestyles. You see, if Christ was really being preached, I tell you the truth. Keyboardists would never come to church with that attitude with which he's playing. Just sitting around there just because he knows how to play the various keys. But all he wants is just his money. Because he has absolutely no fear of Jehovah in him. If we were really preaching Christ, the fear of God would have fallen so heavily upon those people. They would never dare be so presumptuous in the house of God. The word of God tells us in Acts chapter 19 that the apostle Paul on one of his missions had gone into a certain territory and while he was there the Bible says that something alarming took place. There were seven sons of Sceva. The Bible says that they felt it was right to do what Paul was doing. Paul was casting out devils in the name of Christ. They thought, okay, we can do that too. So the devil inspired them to address someone who was highly possessed. They went to the person, they started to say, I adjure you in the name of the Christ that Paul preaches, come out. And y'all know the end of that story. The devil talked back to them and said unto them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? The Bible says that the spirits devoured them. And the whole neighborhood heard about this. And guess what happened when they heard? The Bible says great fear fell upon all those who heard. So much so that even the people who were working arts, who were practicing witchcraft, people who were practicing voodoo, the sorcerers, the wizards, the practitioners of the evil things, those who were working with familiar spirits, the diviners, the soothsayers, the astrologers. The Bible said that upon hearing the word of truth, guess what they did? They gathered all their books. The books that had the remedy according to their witchcraft work. The book that says you need to bathe with soap and lime for this uh, curse to be broken. The book that said, oh, you need to get, hallelujah, a cat's eye and put it in some oil. And that's how you get somebody's man. The book that had all these so-called remedies. They were so convicted. 
that they burned these books. And the Bible tells us that these books were very costly. But the conviction of their hearts was so much that even though these things were expensive, their salvation was valued and esteemed even more. When the word of the Lord is rightly dissected and miracles begin to follow the word, hallelujah, there is no way people's lives are supposed to be the same. If you are going into a church every Sunday and you're not being pricked, you need to ask yourself the question, why am I going there? If you go to church and you are not challenged to go deeper in your prayer life, then it's either you have outgrown that church or ministry or the teachings that they promote or you're just at the wrong place. If you don't leave the house of God feeling a greater desire to go deeper into prayer, deeper into worship, deeper into intercession, then what's the point of gathering? What's the point of going? What's the point of throwing all those offerings? What's the point of throwing all those tithes? If you are not being challenged spiritually to rise to the occasion, The word of the Lord, when rightly dissected, ought to trouble some spirits. If pastor is really dissecting the word, then I'm supposed to see things even more differently coming out of his presence. If prophet is really dissecting the word, if he's really opening up the word to me, then I'm supposed to see another area of my life that needs some tweaking, that needs some adjustment, that needs some change with immediate effect when the word is rightly dissected. When the word is rightly dissected, there is no way and I have to emphasize on this. There's no way we can have absolutely no conviction whatsoever when we're listening to certain songs. Hallelujah. When we're listening to certain lyrics. When we're going to certain places. When we're dressing a certain way. There is no way. Conviction ought not to come upon us. Or could it be that for many of us, indeed, we are being convicted, but we are doing what Saul did at the first. He was kicking against the goads. Are we kicking against the goads right now? I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that indeed, it's not that many have not heard his word rightly dissected. It's not that his word has never been opened up accurately before you. But the issue is that you are fighting against the conviction of your heart. You're kicking against the gold. So many people have conveniently just begun to use the name of Christ in their motivational speeches. And so you know people will gravitate toward it because of course you know there is power in his name. But the Lord is sending out a warning to those people who love to use the name of Christ. Who are promoting their brands in his name. Who are promoting self in his name. Who are pushing their businesses and agendas in his name. The Lord says the time is coming and not long from now. When you will be judged for it. The Lord says not long from this. You will have to give an account. 
I'm speaking to those who have a form of godliness. I'm speaking to those who continue to mislead God's people. I'm speaking to those who continue to, hallelujah, drunk God's people. You continue to cause them to be greatly intoxicated. And you do it at your own convenience. Because when you want them to agree with you on doing certain things, you get them drunk. You just know how to work your way into their hearts for them to say yes. You know just what word, what sentence, what line, what catchy phrase to give them so that they can say yes and give consent. The Lord says there's judgment that awaits. Let us look briefly at Psalm chapter 12. Psalm chapter 12. Now, I want us to look at verse 6. It reads thus. The words of the Lord are pure. Tell two people God's words are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Tell two people, when the word of the Lord is rightly preached, it purifies. When the word of the Lord does not get any additives. When people don't put on and take off and twist it and turn it and ring it and spin it the way they want to. Whenever it is heard, it will cause purification in the life of the hero. Somebody say amen. Let us look again. At Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 to 8. And the word of the Lord reads thus. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Not only does the word of the Lord purify those who are unclean, not only does Jehovah Mekodishkim purge all those who hears his word, but we're understanding from this verse that he brings wisdom to those who hears and those who, hallelujah, notice not just listens, but who hears. Not only does he bring wisdom to those individuals, but as we're understanding here that he brings illumination. The word of the Lord has the potential of causing you to understand more and to see more as a result of what you understand. That's the reason the psalmist says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Because wherever the word of God is rightly opened up or rightly preached, hallelujah, it will cause those things that are in darkness, those things that are entangled in sin, hallelujah, it will cause them to come to light. And if we are really being pricked in our hearts, when those things become known or are brought to the forefront, we are expected to change. And that's why the word says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Wherever Christ is truly preached, there should be conversion. 
Again, except for instances when people are being so stiff-necked, they're kicking against the gold. The typical expectation is that people will convert. And if we are truly converting, then there's no way we will continue to live our double lives. If we're truly converted, there's no way we are deliberately, hallelujah, disobeying the voice of the Lord. If God says to you, Brianna, do not wear any more blue hair. Why are you still wearing blue hair and purple and pink? The Lord is calling you to a place of set apartness. The Lord is separating you from the world. Because see, in the world, that's how they look. And he's saying, although you are in this world, you're not supposed to look like it. Because you're not of it. And so whereas the world, hallelujah, delights in wearing pink here, purple here, and red. I'm going to set you apart. So no, no more purple here, no more blue. When the word of the Lord is rightly dissected. When the spirit of the Lord is, hallelujah, released because somebody didn't tamper with his word. Somebody didn't ring it and spin it the, day, the way they wanted to. There should be such conviction that there will be conversion to the honor and glory of the father. Let me see those people who are saying, yes, I agree. Yes, it is so. Now, John 8 verse 32 says something really interesting. The Lord Jesus was speaking. And in this particular message, he said, Ye shall know the truth. And what? Can you finish it? Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Shall set you free. I want us to ponder these words for a moment. Because I'm still trying to figure out why so many people are in bondage. If it is that we're truly preaching Christ. If we're truly preaching Christ. There should be freedom. There should be greater manifestation of freedom in our midst. Why are so many people being chained up if we're really preaching Christ? He says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, I want to highlight something about the word truth tonight. Saints of the living God, I want us to realize that the truth is not just a concept. The truth is not a theory. Tell two people, the truth is not a concept. The truth is not some kind of formula. The truth is actually a person. Tell two people, the truth is not a thing, but a person. And who is that person? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to know the truth? You want to get a clear definition of the truth? I am the truth. Just like when God sent Moses down to Pharaoh, Moses said unto God, he said, Lord, what should I say to him when he asked who sent me? He said, tell him I am. Hallelujah. I am that I am. And I am saith that he is truth. And that's the reason why the truth will set you free. Because I am in the form of truth is what liberates people out of their bondage. And can we make another connection here? Not only is I am the truth, but watch this. I am is the word. How many of us remember in the book of John, John chapter 1 verse 1. 
He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word what? Was God. The word is God. So wherever Christ is truly being preached, not only is truth setting people free, but seeing that Christ himself is the word, he is breaking asunder, hallelujah, chains and shackles that the enemy has placed upon God's people. So again, why are so many people still bound? Why are so many people still comfortable in their lifestyles? Why do we have so many people living double standard lives and are holding all these big roles in the church? Why? If Christ is truly being preached in that atmosphere. Why are so many young men being comfortable? Smoking. Being addicted to all kinds of things. Having absolutely no conviction to change their lifestyles and are still responsible. They're still leading youth. They're still head of choir. They're still organizing events. How come? Where is the rebuke? Where is the correction through the word? And yes, we're going to do it out of love, but there still needs to be correction. Because God wants to save you. Because should anything happen in your state, you miss your way. Our responsibility. Here's part of the reason why we gather in churches. Lest we think that we just do this thing religiously because it is the right thing to do. Let us understand that there is a purpose behind gathering with the other saints. It's so that we can have checks and balances in the kingdom. It's so that we can be accountable to each other in the kingdom. It's so that if somebody is sliding, just in case the enemy has put some kind of mask or veil around them where they can no longer see for themselves that they're falling back, you can pick it up and help them come back on the right path. And so we must correct each other. We're not living to save our own selves and for our own selves alone to be saved Unto eternal life. But we want our brothers to make it. We want our sisters to make it. And that is why. Instead of trying to acquire wealth. In the name of motivational speeches. Instead of trying to give people all these fancy lines. To tickle their hearts. And to play with their emotions. To get them to dip into their pockets. So you can build your mansion and make it even more beautiful. The devil is a liar. The Lord says. Do not lay up for yourselves. Treasures on earth. That will be soon destroyed by the moth and the worms. But instead lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where no moth, nor worm, will eat and destroy. People of God, as we saw in those various examples that were given tonight. Wherever and whenever the message of Christ, the message of the cross... Is preached in an uncompromised, undiluted, unpolluted way. There has to be change. If you're wondering about miracles. If you're wondering about demons manifesting. If your church is quiet and demons aren't screaming out. Something is wrong with the message being preached there. And I say this unapologetically. I will not take it back. When the message of Christ, rather, is preached, it ought to be delivering some while making some uncomfortable. The same message that Jesus was preaching, remember, it was healing many of their sicknesses and infirmities. 
It was delivering many because many devils came out. But while many were being healed and delivered, there were some who had a problem with what he was doing. So the message of Christ is one that makes clean, but at the same time makes uncomfortable. There should always be some manifestation of both. Because if the devil is as real as the Bible professes him to be, I tell you the truth. If the message that has come to liberate us is rightly dissected, there's no way he's going to sit there and be quiet. He will always manifest. So if we're not seeing any opposition to our messages, and if people's lifestyles are not changing, they were living with some people they were not supposed to be living with last year. This year comes and it's the same thing. They have not changed. Well, we need to go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves the question, is the message of Christ being preached the right way? Because Christ came not to bring peace to your situation, not to make you feel good in your situation, not to make you feel comfortable in your sin, but he came with a sword to kill it. He came to cut it away from you, to pierce and to destroy those things that will prevent you from entering into eternal life. Is there anyone this evening who has been pricked in the heart? You have been pricked just like the men in Jerusalem who having heard Peter's sermon through the Holy Ghost said, men of God, what shall we do? Our hearts have been pricked. What must we do? And like the men who heard Stephen's message, I'm sure many of them converted. We know that many resisted. But maybe there were a few who took heed. And so we always know when we preach the message of Christ, we know we're not preaching to the majority. And that is why it should always be astounding when we see churches full of people, thousands and hundreds, consistently. And we know of their lifestyles. Clearly, Christ ain't being preached there. His name is just being used. But the message that he endorses it ain't being dissected there. I'm telling you the truth. Because we would not presumptuously persist in our acts of disobedience when the sword of the Spirit is going forth fiercely. Or hallelujah, forcefully, strongly, Hallelujah. Is there anyone who has been pierced? If you're saying I have just raised your hands right where you are. If there are some things in your life that you know for sure you need to change. Right where you are just raise those hands. If you are a minister of the gospel. And you know that you need to align more with the word. You may raise your hands. Because believe it or not. Those people who have been charged. With the responsibility to preach the word. Did you know that we're going to be held even more accountable? If you are leading a flock. Man of God. Woman of God. And the people are not converting. If their lives are remaining the same, you need to check your messages. I'm not asking you. I came here in the name and spirit of Christ. Who is the head of the church. And Christ says to tell you. That very quickly. Not long from now, you're going to be held to account. You must give an account. So let us fix it right now. 
Let us put away from us the motivation of speeches. Let us put away from us the self-promoting, self-branding speeches and talks. Because the time of separation is drawing near. Where the wheat shall be separated from the tears. Are you hearing me? I'm here to help you fix it. I'm here so we can get it right while the time allows. Because an hour cometh. When whatever is done would have already been done and cannot be changed or undone. The Lord Jesus put it this way. He said, I must work the work of my father. For a night cometh when no man shall work. Night is coming. Shekiata. Briata. The spirit of the Lord says, Night is coming. Night is drawing near, saith the Lord. Behold, he cometh. And he cometh quickly. Tell to people, night is coming. Night is upon us. And we got to do our work in the daytime. Hallelujah. Those of you who raised your hands, just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord, of all my unrighteousness. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Wash me, sanctify me, purify me, Lord. I want to live a life that is pleasing to you. I want my name to be written down in your book of life. Lord, have mercy upon me. Your word has come in such a strong way tonight. It has penetrated my heart and my mind. And I'm choosing to turn for the better. I profess with my whole heart tonight that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is the son of the living God. He died for me so that I might live and have life more abundantly. I choose to serve him from now onwards. In Jesus name, I pray. Put those hands together for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a gentle reminder. Let me see the hands, by the way, of those people who want to understand their purpose some more. Let me see the hands of those people who've been getting dreams that you don't quite understand and some people who've been seeing some supernatural things. You've been experiencing some unusual things supernatural occurrences have been happening in your midst but you don't quite understand them you're hearing things you're seeing things but you're not really sure how to in interpret them and you're not sure what process you are undergoing at the moment in this book i've seen jesus i talk about my supernatural experiences I interpret them for you. I break them down for you. How many of you know that many people have actually miraculously gotten their healing just by touching this book? It's anointed. It's a book of intimacy. 
It's a new year. It's 2023. And we cannot afford to be far from the Lord like we were last year and in the years prior. We have to step it up another notch in our intimacy with Jehovah. And I tell people all the time before the Lord gave me a ministry, he gave me intimacy. Make sure you get your copy of I've Seen Jesus, details of a divine call to intimacy and the supernatural. Hallelujah. I talk about my experiences, hallelujah, with Jesus. I talk about the visitations I've had from him. I talk about dreams and visions, purpose. I talk about so many things in this book. Go to Amazon. It's available there. Get a copy for your friends and your loved ones. This is the best gift you could give anyone this year. Remember to also go to my uh, website, shadeenanglin.org. Hallelujah. Make sure you leave your name and your email there so that I know how to reach you. Should we have a reason to? If you want to be connected to the ministry, if you want to know when we're going to have the next encounter experience, which is an in-person healing and deliverance service. You've heard about the numerous services we've had last year. People being healed miraculously. How many of you were there in, I think, Hartford, where a man who had what is called a trigger finger, he came into the room with his finger crooked. Many of you, you would have seen these videos for yourself. But let me take you back a little bit. I was ministering the, to this young man who came up when I made an altar call for people who were struggling in the area of consistency. Now, while I was there ministering to this young man, I saw him, he kept on holding on to his hand. And then I saw him use the other hand, pull out a finger that kept on folding under. And when he had his hand like this, he would cry out. And I, I saw the discomfort. I, I said to him, what's going on? That was when he brought it to my attention that he was suffering with what is called a trigger finger or a, some folded finger situation. And to extend the finger, he said, was very painful. Right there, right there in that room, before the eyes of many, even people who were watching online, the spirit of the Lord stretched out his finger. This man never had a trigger issue again. We saw a woman who came with her foot, hallelujah, banded up, hallelujah. She had a crutch. And before the night ended, this woman who was in a cast was jumping around. The cast became a hindrance to her. And y'all know casts are supposed to help you to walk and to get better. The Lord healed her. So many miracles. If you really want to know where we're going to have the first encounter for 2023, make sure you go to my website and subscribe that's shadeenanglin.org. Remember, you may watch the broadcast on my Facebook page. It's titled Shadeen Anglin Ministry Page. On TikTok, Shadeen Anglin 353. And on YouTube, Shadeen Anglin. Remember also to look out for the scammers who are pretending to be me. I only have one legitimate Instagram account. And it's Shadeen Anglin. It has no underscore at the end of it. It has no number or numeral at the end of it. So please be on the alert. Shadeen Anglin does not have an orphanage. She's not soliciting monies from people. She's not sending prophecies to people. So please have your spiritual antennas up and running. Make sure they're functional. Because clearly the kingdom of darkness is on a mission. It's looking for targets. Please do not be one of them. God bless you. See you on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time right here on TikTok and on Facebook. Hallelujah. This broadcast is being streamed in the U.S. of A. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening and I will see you soon. Hallelujah.